Okay, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the chapter one, today's restaurant networking group. We are a group of vendors in the food service industry who are here to help each other expand our businesses and also to help restaurateurs if they have any questions, problems, or concerns that we may be able to help them with. We've got well over 100 years, more than a couple of hundred years of experience in the restaurant industry. So I think that we're, between us, we, we can answer pretty much any question. And if we can't, we know where to get the answers. So I thank you all for coming. And we have a new face on the board this morning. That's you, Elisa. So yeah, we're gonna ask, going to ask you to just tell us who you are, what you do, and how we can get in touch with you. Uh, my name is Lisa Bunting, and I'm in Southern Illinois, and uh, I'm a realtor, and I also am uh, an assistant to a developer, and uh, kind of the reason I'm on here today is we're going to be developing some uh, small uh, coffee, stop, coffee shop style franchises, and uh, so John thought this might be a good, uh, good group, good resource to get connected with. Um, I'm in the very beginning stages, so basically here just to kind of be a fly on the wall and learn and, and see, uh, get up to speed. Great. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Great to have you. Good. Welcome. welcome. Yes. We have somebody else who just got on. I, I, I don't know who it is. A gentleman wearing a baseball cap. Oh. And my screen identified as iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mine I have. Too, Chris. <laughs> I think I have an idea. Is that is that you, Mike? I guess not. Well, that, that, that took off on us. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Oh damn, Howard! You scared him away. <laughs> That's what I do best. I <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, got <Calvin. laughs> All right. Here goes Randy. All right. So uh, what I'd like to do for Alicia's benefit and for the benefit of everybody watching. Oh, that was Randy with the baseball hat. Good morning. Hey, how um, you doing? I didn't recognize you with the hat. Um, Howard, may I interrupt for one moment? No. Well, I'm going to. <laughs> Go um, it, uh, it's related. I'm sorry. Uh, is there a gentleman here named Seth Levy? He's uh, he was going to send you something. And he did, and he should be on the meeting. That's does he have the invitation? I, I did send it to him. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Okay. Yes, I did receive his okay. his uh, thing that he would be on the meeting. Okay. So um, I would. Uh, like to start our intros and again tell us who you are what you do where you are and how people can contact you and john mulholland i'm going to start with you because you're driving He's all right so, hey, it's, so good morning this, this is good good morning folks uh usually this is where chris takes over the show i represent uh ssc and crystals for the details and how we can save people money on their food costs. Go Hi, ahead, Chris. John. So, uh, John, Kevin Anderson, and I are all uh, with Strategic Supply Chain Partners. Uh, we uh, function as an outsourced purchasing department to small for small to mid market restaurant organizations. Uh, basically, what we do is we analyze, negotiate, and manage distribution and manufacture agreements on behalf of our clients. Uh, we'll monitor commodity markets uh, and ensure client pricing is aligned with what's going on in the markets. We also monitor compliance, uh, both internally and externally with suppliers to ensure the agreements we put in place on behalf of our clients are being followed. Uh, and basically act as that full source outsource purchasing department. Uh, we handle food, we can handle non-alcoholic beverage, we can do paper supplies. Uh, we do wear washing programs. Uh, we're actually working with one of our larger clients, saving them over 200,000 a year on utilities. Uh, so a lot of different things that we get involved in. Uh, uh, 
the cool thing about what we do is that it is a no-cost trial. Uh, we're 100% uh, contingency-based, meaning we only make money if we actually find savings for the client. Uh, and in addition to that, we're able to provide a C-suite level and operations level consulting services. We do that for a couple of our clients as well. We have what we consider to be a, um, a, a pretty good referral partner, uh, partner program. Uh, we pay our clients 10% of whatever we earn over the life of a contract we put in place. Our typical distribution contracts with a U.S. Foods or a Cisco run for about uh, three years. And I'll add to that that uh, um, we've been doing this long enough now where I can comfortably say we're going to save them on the low end 8%. But on the high end, we're going to save on 15%. We're right now with our current clients, every client we're working with, we're in the teens in terms of what we're delivering back to them. Uh, it's also important that they understand that a dollar is saved. I know a lot of people here, you know, is focused on helping drive uh, top line um, revenue. You know, we focus on the other end, which is bottom line profitability. And we like to tell people a dollar we save you is worth seven or more in terms of valuation of your company uh, on that EBITDA line on a uh, profit and loss statement if anybody's uh, interest uh, or end game is a liquidity event. So uh, that's who we are, uh, strategic supply chain partners. Uh, Kevin, give them, some, uh, give them some contact info real quick. Sure. You can contact us at www.sscp.partners. Uh, or you can call me at 407-497-9495. And we'd be more than happy to talk with anybody about any opportunities that are out there and we're here to help. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Yes. Uh, do, do you deal with like any luxury boutique hotels or small resorts or is that like- Absolutely. We, we deal with restaurants. We deal with individual restaurants. Uh, we deal with chains. Uh, we have done work in the uh, child nutrition space. Uh, we've done work in casinos. Uh, we can certainly do work hotels. in hotels as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, Kevin. Yeah, maybe I could, you know, get a time on the calendar for us to talk. That'd be great. Great. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I was telling John earlier. I have a. Uh, I think I have a pretty good lead for you guys. Uh, just had some information this morning. I'm going to email it over to John because it's right here in his backyard. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Marinick, good morning. Good morning. John Marinick, Marinick Food Service Consultants. We do restaurant design and consulting. So if you need a restaurant or a uh, coffee shop designed or laid out, we do that as well. And uh, we do um, hotels, restaurants. We even do packaging facilities and um uh, wineries we just picked up a winery that's going to be in west virginia and um that's going to be a nice one and we we even do commissaries we're doing a commissary that's moving um from uh, one location to another so if you even have one place that has existing equipment and you want to move that as well so um we're not tied in with any kind of dealers or anything like that so if you have um you want to go shop it. You want to have equipment that you prefer. We don't. We don't have any ties in with anybody else. So um, you can. We can give you a set of plans that you can have anybody's name on it you want. It doesn't have any names on it. You can. You can have a set with specs any way you want it. Um, so that way you can shop it the way that you'd like to shop it, and that way you can save money the way you want to save it. Um, and if you want us to help you um, shop it, we can even tell you the best way to shop it. And we can also show you, um, like in South Florida, we can tell you um, which brands are the best way to buy and how to bundle and how to how to do the purchasing and everything like that. Like which ones you're going to get the best service on and all that kind of stuff in the area. Uh, we've been around, well, I've been around in the industry for about 42 years and um we've been around geez howard how long we've we been around <laughs> i know i know you probably close to 30 years <laughs> so anyway um we've been around so uh you can reach us at 954-817-1183 thank you
Thank you. Let's go to Sal. Good morning. I'm one of our new members. Good morning. I'm Sal Iosia, the CEO and founder of Servi. We make service faster for busy restaurants and bars. Uh, we provide a beautiful QR menu that also can take the order and the payment and print the ticket in the kitchen and the bar. Um, we've been doing this since before COVID, uh, since uh, 2016. Uh, our, our mission is to make service experiences delightful for all customers in, in hospitality and retail. So if you've ever been at a restaurant, then you know, then, uh, you know nothing beats a great server, but uh, you don't always have a great server, right? So the average experience of service uh, is typically uh, not great. So now with COVID, there's a staffing issue. So a lot of restaurants are, you know, experiencing, you know, trouble staffing front of house. We can help a restaurant operate with, with virtually no, no waiters or waitresses. Although typically we work in a blended uh, mode where there is still a waiter or waitress taking orders and our system allows them to see which tables are active and which ones are not in self-ordering. So they can take the orders of the tables that are not using the QR codes. So they can get all of the orders in the dining room. We work with food trucks, with counter service, with full service. Um, so uh, the only thing we don't really go after is, is QSR right now. So uh, grills and bars, great target casual dining, Mexican restaurants, uh, specifically restaurants that get very busy and have a wait, we can reduce that wait time uh, by turning tables faster because the order is paid when it is placed. So uh, you can reach us at get.servi, which is ser.vi, and you can call me at 615-663-3663. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, our next speaker is also a new member. We had three new members sign up this week. And Ron Weber, good morning. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Ron, Ron. Weber. Um, I work for a company called Mind Lab. Uh, we are a uh, leading manufacturer in metal detection and uh, gold detection and counter mining. And we have a communication company. We're a public uh, company in Australia. Uh, I am in charge of a new product that we've uh, launched to the hospitality industry using our metal detection technology. It's a method to help restaurants save money by avoiding their staff throwing away their silverware and ramekins by the use of our silver saver labels to make them detectable. It's really the first uh, disruptor in the industry that provides metal detection technology compared to what's been out for a long time as a a magnet system. We're having some high success. We launched the product. We started it in around uh, April, and uh, we're just uh, you know moving along very rapidly, uh, selling a lot of uh, end users, uh, uh, setting up the distributor uh, agreements, uh, working with uh, end users. So certainly, if anybody has any interest or wants to talk about networking, I'm open. Um, I can give you my email and phone number, but I think when Howard sends out uh, all of our information, uh, well, if anybody go ahead and give has us how, how we can have people watching can get in touch with you. Yeah, so so it'll, it'll be on the email. I think that Howard sent out, but uh, my email is uh, ron.weber at mindlab.com. And I can be reached at 630 uh, 596 Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Terry Lena. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Friday? Excited it's a Friday. My name's awesome. Terry Lena. Good, good to hear. Uh, my name is Terry Lena. I work for Workwear Outfitters. We manufacture multiple lines of apparel from culinary to maintenance to drivers. Uh, under the Dickies, Red Cap, Bulwark, FR brands. We do partner with our distributors and we work through distributors. My job, what I do is I work with the end users to help them when they're starting a uniform program. So I can help them with the presentations on samples, a wear test, uh, just to kind of see if they're interested in wearing our product. 
I can be reached at 720-244-4972. And my email is terry.lena, L-E-N-A, at www.of.com. Great. Thank you. Well, let's stay with the Terry's. Terry, T-R-N, Terry. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. And also, uh, when you're reading uh, the February issue of uh, our newspaper online, hoping that you do, uh, look for Ron Weber's new product in there with the photo. I think that is just phenomenal and will save so much money um, to the restaurant owners. Their silverware gets thrown away, the ramekins, everything gets thrown away by accident. There's two bins, one for garbage and one for, you know, their silverware sometimes and they just trash them. So I think that is a terrific product and we picked up on it right away, got a press release and that'll be in the next edition. Um, I invite anybody in this group to send me press releases. I've gotten several from Carpengiani, which I use. I've gotten a few from others, which I use. Um, what I do is provide monthly lead reports. Who's opening, when and where. Owners names, email addresses, phone numbers, square footage. Do they have other locations? Are they doing franchising? Have they entered the state of Florida? Have they, you know, whatever information we can get, we do. We put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I get all the information about the first from everyone. The sources, somebody emailed me and said, where do you get your sources from? They had just signed up. And she said, I've never seen anything like this. I said, you won't, you won't. You'll see maybe a 20th of it for about four times the price, um, but you won't. And I told her, you know, we've been in business 28 years now and we have uh, sources and resources everywhere in the US. We have PR firms that we personally know that send us information. We have people that drive around. We have people that mail us stuff in. We have people that see us at the restaurant shows um, and they will send us in a letter, a card, an email. Hey, I'm opening a place. Do you know where I can get this? Do you know where I can get that? And when Howard was doing his, um, his opening report here, right before we started, um, yes, we do give out info to anybody watching this that might need it with our hundreds of years of experience. We also can get them every single product that they need to open that restaurant, cafe or bar, uh, whatever it is, everybody in this group can supply the products. And if you can't, we know who can. So yeah, they're going to ask a question. They need help. You need you know, sales. We can provide it all. Terry, so, and, I, Terry and I were in, t in Tennessee and went to a restaurant and happened to meet the owner and got into a conversation. And he told us he was moving his restaurant to Florida and he needed sources. So I invited him to come to this meeting, but it's a little early for him. But he did need to talk to somebody about a product and he called me and I was able to help him. So what Terry says about us as a group and us as individuals here can help restaurateurs, we certainly can. And that's what we're here for. Or a friend of a friend who knows somebody who's opening something, you would be shocked at how at, at, at the resources. But um, so that's what I do. Thank you. Have a good week. How extensive is that list that you uh, set up? And do you, do you send that uh, weekly, monthly? How, how often do you update that? It's a monthly report. There's 40 to 70 brand new leads every month. Okay. Some of the bottom gets taken off from the last reports now because they're just too big. If somebody calls me and says, hey, you know, I had a December report and I can't find it, I'll give it to them. Um, that is... Um, but I'll send you a sample if you'd like. It's a really old sample and we take the emails off, but I'll send you a sample. Um, it's done once a month. You get it by the 9th. Excel spreadsheet sorted by zip code or city. A lot of salesmen. We have Cisco, Gordon Food Service. Um, oh my gosh, United. Um, PepsiCo. Yeah, Pe PepsiCo. Um, the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association, uh, 
people that up in the Georgia Restaurant Association, they buy the leads religiously year after year. And once you're in, whatever price you pay, you don't pay the higher price when you renew the following year. You're grandfathered in at that price. Okay, so, send, send me a sample, would you, Terry? Absolutely, happy All to right, do thanks. it. Yeah. I might even send you a newer one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it, thanks. Okay. Uh, oh, let's move from the Terry's to the John's. Let's go to John Bung. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome all the new um, everyone here. Um, my name is John Bunn. I'm with the BH Bun Company. <clears throat> uh, most everyone has seen our products. It's called the Bun Tying Machine. We've tied clothing. We've tied uh, bakery boxes. Uh, we've been around since 1907. Um, we're here because, uh, number one, plastic is on its way out. A lot of countries are changing. Uh, we ship all over the world. Um, we manufacture our machines right here in Lakeland, Florida. Um, kind of a disturbing news. Uh, two years ago, one in four delivery drivers admitted to eating the food they delivered. Stickers don't work. As of May of this year, it's now 80%. Wow. It's risen that much. Um, our machines secure boxes. Uh, it's called the bun knot. It cannot be duplicated by hand. We've, like I say, we've done bakery boxes. We can do um, the clam shells, um, anything you can think of, pizza boxes. And that's why we're here to help the industry secure their food for deliveries from people who like to steal the food they deliver. Uh, our website is www.buntyco.com, pronounced Bun Tyco, stands for Bun Tying Company. That name dates back to the 1930s. My email is info, I-N-F-O, at buntyco.com. Our phone number is 800-222-BUN, B-U-N-N. And thank you, everyone. Hey, thank you. Uh, John McCabe, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good week um, and looking forward to a good weekend. I'm John McCabe. I'm with Harper Johnny, which is a division of the Ollie Group, well-built group. And uh, we're having an exciting year. Um, I can be reached at 401 368 6406 or John M at C A R P I G I A N I USA dot com. An interesting situation I had this, this week. I sold about six uh, frozen drink machines to a guy who runs a truck. And he gave me some information that uh, he's, he's going to use them for wine slushies. And he gave me an indication one of the largest um, amusement parks in the north. Uh, last year, uh, did wine slushies, and it represented 30% of their food sales. So it's, wow. it's amazing to find that out and think something that maybe down the road when you're planning a restaurant or something, maybe this is something to maybe look at as part of your menu. Um, we will be at Naflam in a couple of weeks. Come by and say hello if you're there. Um, I will be at the Penn State Course 101 this coming coming week and looking forward to that. Our company is going to be at Seagip and Rimini next week. It's a large bakery and ice cream show. It's the largest in the world. To give an example of how big it was, last year, Carpa Johnny had about 400 machines there. We were just one of the companies there. Uh, um, holy cow uh, it's a huge it's a well worth going if you, if you want to kind of see have exciting where is eat, that? have a good time where is um, that one Rimini Italy oh um, I guess the thing I say is I'm available we do uh, a lot of work with people at anywhere from hotels to resorts to individuals to large chains in, with ice cream gelato pastry and frozen desserts. I am available to help you. We go to market by education. We have classes in, right now in uh, Italy, New York, Chicago, um, and in North Carolina. And we do have a Spanish class in Miami, uh, as well as classes all around the world. Uh, look forward to helping anyone who wants to explore opportunities for profit in frozen desserts. Have a great day and look forward to seeing you at NAPM. Hey, thank you. 
Randy, the baseball hat. Good morning, everybody. Randy hey. Pumphutis here. Hey, 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 I'm here. Randy Pumphutis here with Heartland Payroll. Sorry for the, uh, the little background here. Um, actually, I have a good friend of mine moving from New York. They're here. I'm going to help him move a little bit from uh, Rochester, New York to Delray, Florida. So another, another implant as we have it. Um, Heartland Payroll, we do everything from startups to multi-locations, acquisitions. Um, moving relocations which is happening more and more and uh, we do everything like i said from startups to to multi-locations regardless of the size small one mom and pop to uh a thousand employees um as you know um on my calls i'm a very big fan of statistics heartland is exclusively endorsed by the nra and the florida restaurant association which I probably said on the council and they released a survey to the restaurant operators through 2022. Uh, these are pretty eye-opening, especially for what I do from the payroll HR side. 62% uh, of the restaurant tours don't have enough employees. 79% state that they have a difficulty filling them. 87 are likely to hire. 57% are likely to terminate if we fall into a deeper recession. So if you are not on LinkedIn with me, I share a lot of this. I actually reposted this and I had three restaurant tours contact me saying, how can you help drive down the cost? So if you're on LinkedIn, I'll send that out and uh, I'd be happy to, to help you and, and we can support each other that way. My contact information is 585-622-2993. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Again, I want to just you know mention that there are our private Facebook page. If you if you're on Facebook, you know please utilize that page as well for any information you want to get out to the group. Okay, uh, Darren, good morning. Darren Gull in his car. Yeah. Okay, I had to unmute. Sorry. Um, yeah, T today's the day of road warrior. I've been from Miami. I'm now on my way to Fort Pierce uh, for meetings. So <laughs> Darren Gall, Tracy.net, we're a communications consulting and solution provider. Uh, what we do is we help you find the right phone solution for your restaurant or business. Uh, we work with all the carriers. So we try and bundle packages that make the most sense, save you the most money and give you features you didn't know were available. Uh, we just had a meeting with one of our suppliers yesterday. Um, the product we've been using for our restaurant solution, they've done a refresh of a new upgrade line that's going to be full color displays. Really gorgeous looking. Um, we've got ours on our way. We're going to be putting together a promo that we're going to call uh, communications in a box. So it'll be a turnkey system where we ship it out. It's ready to go. Fully administered uh, and supported by us ongoing at very affordable pricing. So Darren Gall, Tracy.net, that's T-R-A-C-I.net. Uh, our phone number is 800-881-8899. And you can reach us at sales at Tracy.net. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark Wilson, good morning. You're on mute, Mark. Sorry about that. Good there morning, you go. everyone. Uh, my company is called uh, Curveware. We manufacture the Curveware system, which is comprised of three things. Uh, the most comfortable eating utensils in the world and uh, effortless to use and hold. Uh, pedestals, which are used to set the table uh, in seconds instead of minutes with great precision. And probably most Im important in all of this is our washing and storage racks, which totally eliminate the labor associated with uh, wiping and polishing utensils because our utensils hang. And when they come out of the dishwasher, they drip dry spot free in about, oh, 35, 40 seconds. And uh, so it reduces the water and energy associated with washing flatware by 78%. And that's based on some NRA numbers of how many pieces of flatware you can wash in a single pass. Uh, you know, they dump too many on there and somebody out in the dining room is asking for a clean fork, which probably be everybody here has asked for a clean fork. And um, 
we had our product uh, tested in a uh, serve safe uh, training facility. They put temperature tags on all the utensils. And with 180 pieces going through the dishwasher, every single utensil reached the temperature to kill all the pathogens. So if there was any pathogens remaining on the utensils, they were deader than dead. And uh, and that's a good thing. It's uh, So that's what we do. Uh, I can be reached at 434. 333-6455. And our website is curveware.com. There's no E in the middle. So it's C-U-R-V-W-A-R-E.com. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Our other restaurant tour, Helen, good morning. Good morning. I'm Helen Gottesman. Along with my husband, Robert, we are starting an ice cream, coffee, and dessert bar on wheels to focused on the employment of special needs individuals, especially those with Down syndrome and autism. And we have an event scheduled for Wednesday in Broward County. I could share that the details with you as soon as I copy them from my husband's messages. And we, we're looking for future events and we are still trying to find the right uh, kiosk slash cart for our events and Howard's been trying to help us with the right sourcing. Any ideas, comments, please call us. My phone number is 561-676-2078 and our website is deliciousspoonfuls.org. Okay, thank you. Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, Peter was on. He's not, I don't see him on now. Peter, are you there? Okay. Uh, well, I'll do my intro. My, I'm Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of a trade newspaper called Today's Restaurant News. We started in 1996, and we were in print until 2018, and we are now a digital publication. And uh, we have added several different services to our mix. We do email marketing, video email marketing, Terry's Restaurant Lee's Report, and of course, our networking groups. You know, I came across an interesting statistic as far as the, the networking goes. It, it, somebody was talking about how you get, make friends and, and acquaintances. It takes 50 hours of, uh, now I lost the word, it takes 50 hours of interaction with somebody to become a acquaintance. And it takes 90 hours to become a friend. Now, a lot of people in this group have put in their 50 hours just by being in this group for a couple of years. And some of us are past that number. So it's an interesting fact to consider because in being in this kind of, kind of group, uh, you want to do business with friends. You want to do, and it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, uh, but you want to do business with friends. You want to know somebody who you're dealing with. You want to know that they're legitimate. And I can say this is probably a self governing group any networking group is a self governing group if you give a leak to somebody and they screw it up you know they're going to hear about it so that's just a little tidbit uh waiting peter is not coming on so um anybody want to bring anything up i didn't even give our telephone numbers today uh, if anybody wants any restaurateur, anybody wants to join our group, any supplier, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or look at our website, trnusa.com. In, in the time that we have remaining, uh, I'd like to sort of get into a little discussion and I'm glad Elise is here today and Helen, because this is mm -hmm. going to touch on, on what they're doing. Uh, these are what social media 
has done to the restaurant industry and vice versa. Uh, and what the first thing, the first item that this article touches is, is they call it one star away from profit. So if you have a restaurant and people have been reviewing your restaurant online and you're not getting good reviews, this is going to impact what you do. Uh, and there's nobody in the group that is a specifically an internet uh, or a Yelp specialist or something like that, but there are ways that you can uh, turn a bad review into a good review. And, and please jump in if, if you feel that you can contribute. This is not a lecture. I want an open conversation. So if you want to jump in, please do. So Yelp is, you know, is, is, can be very helpful. It can be very hurtful. So uh, that's their first item. Number two was uh, restaurant marketing uh, in the age of social media. Of course, social media is tremendously important in your daily advertising and your advertising as a restaurateur should be done daily. And this is interesting because we had a conversation last week. I don't think you were here, Chris, right? Last week? No, I was not. I really. was hoping you would have been because this is, uh, we, we talked about uh, uh, adver advertising that, uh, I forgot the name they called it, where if you have uh, your menu online or you can post it out on your social media, you might have a, a price for a lunch and you might have a price for dinner for the same item. And you want to push that out. And you, you might have a day, let's say on an example, a, a Tuesday, where your walk-in box is loaded with X, Y, Z. We don't know what it is, but at that point, you want to create a special and you want to push that out. So you want to get it out on social media so people will come in the door. And that's a great way to do it. I don't know if you have experience with that, Chris or Elise. Have any experience with that? Well, I've always had a marketing department working under me. Um, they had plenty of experience with that. You know, we had social media, you know, partners that were responsible for search engine optimization. We had people responsible for sending out the, the daily social media communications, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it's a big deal because that's the way the the uh, the two generations moving into their peak spending power uh, and economic impact are going to operate. Uh, but if you want to, I want to go back to online reviews for a minute. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can turn a bad one around, but it's really much better to just get it right the first time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, I, I, I actually have a client uh, on my consulting side. Interestingly enough, it's not even a restaurant client, it's a solar panel. Uh, um, technology firm, basically, uh, they look at themselves as a construction client uh, company, but really they're a they uh, business to uh, uh, consumer. Uh, so I'm telling them they're you're really service, and one of your KPIs needs to be your um, online ratings, and I'm telling them they need to be 4.8. Uh, you get one one. It takes 19 fives to get back to a 4.8. Ew. Right. I want to say that again. You get one one. It takes 19 fives to get back to 4.8. Very few people are going to rattle off 19 fives in a row. You throw in a couple of fours, you'll never get back to 4.8. You can have thousands of reviews. All you need is a couple of ones. And it's and the problem is <clears throat> that one. Yeah, again, Howard, you can fix it, but you're better off doing it right the first time. How do you do that? This is where most restaurants don't get it right. We've talked about it on these calls a million times. They're not willing to invest in higher right. They panic higher because they're short staff rather than be a little more diligent and hire the right people. That is step number one. Step two, thoroughly train your people on what the customer experience expectations are and demand that your people deliver those expectations consistently. 
if you're able to do those two things, I, I've, I've seen, I've run companies where we were 4.89. But if you don't hire right, you don't train right, you will never get there. Right. And to that, part of hire right is not just hiring ex skill, uh, experienced servers. Part of hiring right is hiring people who fit your organizational culture. So if you don't have that piece figured out, you got you know, that's one more piece of the puzzle you're, you're never going to get to. If you don't know what your culture is, you know, culture is internal, external is brand, but the two have to have a connection. If you can't hire people that fit what you're trying to provide for your customers and know how to train them to, to deliver it to the, to the level you expect it to be done and have the ability to hold them accountable at a measurement tool, you're not going to do it. So that's my little spiel. And as always, Howard, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> uh, Howard, I have something to add to that. So, you know, I agree, Chris. It's like you got to have high, st high, high standards and higher, right? But then if you think it statistically, it's like, you know, uh, you want to hire right across your whole, everyone that you hire, right? So what something like Survey allows a restaurant to do is to work smarter, not harder. So you can hire right uh with have fewer of the right people instead of so basically go for quant quality instead of quantity on staff you want to have the right people and especially right now since it's you know dependent on the market the staffing the you know the the labor market is just not stepping up to want to work in these restaurants you know um so nowadays people are willing to use their phones uh more than ever to engage with a brand um, to play, to look at that menu and then also order, you know, and pay. So the, uh, what survey allows restaurants that we work with to do is to, you know, repurpose staff to basically get those drinks out faster, to prepare things faster, to provide better service. Um, and then have like healthier margins as well. Cause you're saving like 60% on front of house staff while still providing the same level of service that you did before where you were standing around at each table waiting for people to give you their order, humming and hawing and asking questions. Um, everything is consistently in the menu. Everything can be managed in the mobile menu experience, proper upselling, proper descriptions, proper photos. You know, the menu is always there presently, you know, when they, when they want to order again. So, you know, you, then you end up now the restaurants in a situation where like, well, you know, need to, uh, I can cut back. I can let go of my poor performers and keep my star performers. And customers are still going to tip. Customers still tip between 11 and 15% of order volume that come through. Um, and so the staff that remain are going to get those tips now. So, so to, to add to that, Sal, you know, years ago in a Paul's Casual company I was CEO of, we were actually one of the very first in the New Orleans area to introduce. Uh, um, uh, handheld point of sale units. And our model, which is similar to what you're doing, yours is like taking it to the whole next level. Uh, because even then, I mean, this has got going back over 10 years ago, staffing was already hard then. And our model was, how do we, how do, we do this, deliver equal or better service with less people? So here's some statistics we came up in our analysis. 75% of a server's time was not spent table side engaging sure. with customers. Most of it is spent running in the back, ringing stuff up, running in the back to get their food, running in the back to get their drinks and bring right. it back down. So part of our model was we wanted to go to 10 table stations instead of the typical three, four and five most restaurants run with. And we were able to do that. And we told our people, you're no longer just a server, you're the host of the party. Your job is to stay and engage with your customers. We didn't have customers having to look around and find with a server because it's kind of similar to your model. We had drink runners and food runners. They actually made more money with more tables, did less running around, and spent the whole time engaged with customers. Yeah. That's step one. But the other piece is likes attract likes. Okay. When a repu a restaurant develops a reputation for being a great place to work at, because again, we've talked about this before, the number one reason people leave a company is the way they're being managed. You want to hold on to your people, have a great culture, treat them right, give them opportunity. Don't treat them the way most restaurants treat their employees, which is one step above the garbage that goes out in a dumpster. Treat your people with respect and courtesy, give them an opportunity, recognize where they come from, and you will, achieve, you know, there are still restaurants out there that are fully staffed that do a great job. And everybody goes, well, how do they do it? The difference is culture and the way they're managed. 
how they're trained. Don't ever forget that piece too. You want to crush the, your competition, great culture, treat them right, hire right, great training, give them opportunity to great uh, to, to make good money. So these we have a right, these on these the the young generation. There's studies out there that absolutely say they prefer to interact with a device over a human being. We, we so there's have plenty a, of models out there to make all of this happen. I agree. We have an article on our website that was posted Monday in, in the blog section about uh, recognition, uh, recognizing your employees by mm -hmm. management. And that, that, again, like you said, very important. Uh, Chris, if I could comment, I, I think what you said is is very interesting. <laughs> Uh, my son just told me yesterday, he's a third year at the University of Virginia in a microeconomics class, and the professor came in with this massive bag of popcorn, and they told half the group, one group on one side of the class, and another group on the other side of the class, okay, you got to get this popcorn to everybody in your group. It had everything to do with what you just described. So one person was filling bags and passing it back, and that took nine minutes. Another group took another way, and it took 10 minutes. And then the professor told the uh, the students about their earlier class where they organized it differently with runners and, uh, and they did it in five minutes. So, exactly. you know, yeah. so something as simple as that, it, it made a huge impression on my son. And, you know, what it does is it gets people thinking the way that you're thinking and the way you just well, explained. Yeah, you know, Mark, one of the problems with the restaurant industry, way too many, I say this all the time, way too many people in the restaurant industry because they're attracted to the creative side of it. And the fact of the matter is, is the restaurant industry to a large degree is a manufacturing operation. Okay, we take different uh, items, we recombine them, repurpose them into something we call a finished plate and then have to get it out to the table. So there are things out there like lean management and Six, six, six Sigma sure, sure. Uh, philosophies that totally apply to the restaurant business. When you talk to most restaurateurs, their head starts spinning when you bring that type of stuff up. And so how, how many of them? Well, they're also even, extremely resistant to change. How many of them would even think to do an analysis of how do my servers spend their time and come up with a number like 75% of their time is not engaged with the customer? Right. Restaurateurs don't think that way. Uh, but there are people out there who do that can help them make money if they're ever willing to actually listen to some listen, right. science instead of just the, have the creative juices going. So I'll hop off my soapbox for the second time. <laughs> well, you know, with this group is fortunate that we have uh, two or three people who have been employed uh, in the management level in, in, in chain restaurants with uh, great knowledge of, of the industry. And we appreciate that. Well, you can tell for sure that Chris has been in every aspect from the bottom and worked his way up and luckily he is very bright to be able to get to where he is because i can hear behind behind the lines of what he means so i get it being from california and seeing the way that um southern california and seeing the way that the waiters and waitresses were treated um you felt so sorry for them you know they, you know, you take advantage of certain people because of whatever reasons, and uh, you don't see them as, uh, you know, an equal. They're, they're the servers there, and the management, you know, walks around with his head up in the air when he could be actually doing something to help these people who are overwhelmed. So, who yeah, are not be properly. A, be a coach, trained. be a teacher, be a mentor instead of being a boss. Exactly. Not, not boss. Exactly. A mentor. Yeah. Exactly. Let me, uh, Terry, thank you for the kind words. Much oh, you're here. welcome. Very humble. <laughs> well, you don't need them, but I thought I'd say it. <laughs> and the third item from the article is, I think this is a great one. I think John Maranek is going to relate to this. Uh, well, we, interior design for the sake of Instagram. I mean, I know John's not an interior designer, but what if a restaurateur hires a designer it, it, currently that designer is going to try to design the restaurant with instagram in mind what i mean by that is they're going to design it so that when a customer comes in and they're taking pictures of certain areas it shows the restaurant's uh high points 
when they post it on Instagram. So it's it's a uh, it's uh, it's going to become an Instagram worthy and become uh, a, a big deal online for social media. John, you work with designers. I'm sure you have anything on that. We we have it right now down in Miami, and it it doesn't necessarily work. Uh, it's it's a good highlight until the people get there and they find out that it doesn't function. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we have it right now down in Miami, um, and I said it before it was before it was actually designed, and um, it's. Uh, I don't want to say the name of the place, but um, uh, it's a very well-known place that just opened, and um, uh, they're running into each other right now. They, they, it's an open kitchen concept, and everybody wanted to see it, and they wanted to have it all seen on uh, Facebook and everything like that before everybody got there, and um, expensive oven that you could see, you know, and uh a lot of money spent in the kitchen and um everybody's running into each other so john perfect example that's the classic form over function and i'm sure you know your job's all about functionality and efficiency because that's what leads to uh profitability and, and today i'm sorry it's a restaurant the purpose of a business is to make money and i think too many people they again Restaurant people get caught up in this creative side of the equation and then think somehow it's just going to translate to profit and it, and it doesn't. So uh, I'm with John on this one. Efficiency uh, and uh, uh, function has to come first. And then around that, you can create your branded look, but you can't. I, I don't, I don't, yeah, you know, Howard, I hate to say it. I don't know if that's the best idea in the world to design a restaurant. If, or, if you design, if you I design, didn't, I didn't write it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just stating yeah, an opinion have, here, but John, I get what you're talking about. I've seen countless restaurants where it's like, you know, it takes 20 extra steps to do a function and you wear your staff out and it's harder to work in. And by the way, you want to know why they lose employees? It's too hard to work there sometimes. The space isn't designed right. So, anyway. All right. Well, we're, All right. You know, we're at, thank you. We're, we're at 12 o'clock. I just want to mention quickly, if anybody would like to make a presentation to the group uh, next week or the week after, please let me know. I want to schedule, start scheduling some of the people here because we have some new people that we certainly could learn more about their products. Uh, <clears throat> Would the uh, new young lady like to, and I don't have my, I'm on my phone, on my computer, uh, now that she's heard everything, like to ask anything, add anything? Alicia? Barrett, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Yeah, Alicia. She's still there, Alicia? Yeah, she's yeah, still she's there. On, she's on mute. She's on mute. <laughs> there she is find the mute button there for a minute um just thanks for letting me jump in here today and uh i think as things progress with what i'm doing uh there's definitely going to be some valuable resources here most definitely do you have any questions anything you want to know anything we can help you with um anything else you want to throw out there feel free well if not uh i All want right. to th thank everybody for coming uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you all next week. I'll keep the window open for a while if anybody wants to hang around. And uh, Hi. have a great awesome. weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody. Keep driving, John. Bye, Bye Randy. Nice <laughs> to see you finally. <laughs> Get off five more hours. Oh, my gosh. Help me. Oh, yeah, I can't wait till this project's over with, but... Uh, Numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger, so I've got to keep coming up here until we get it sold. Oh get yeah, you can. Get it sold. Yeah, you're not walking away from big numbers. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, That's no, not, not like this. <laughs> yeah. This is these are life life changing numbers too.